And uh, I'll hand over to you now, Steve. No worries. Well, thanks, Rocky. And it's great to be here. And thanks, everybody, for uh, coming along. And uh, also to those that are watching the replay. And I hope I can give you some stuff that you can use today. 50 minutes is such a short time. We were talking before we started that, uh, you know, 50 minutes now, I feel like I just opened my mouth and then, uh, then I have to shut it again. So let me go through as quick as I can. I'm going to introduce you to this um, <clears throat> some of you to tapping itself because you may not have heard about tapping on acupoints or acupressure points. Um, this has spurned a whole new field of psychology called energy psychology. Um, I tell people I am a psycholo psychologist. I trained in psychology, but I want to assure you that I have fully recovered. Um, but there's only been a few things that I've learned in all my study that, <clears throat> that work at home, and tapping is one of them. This uh, process which you know, it seems strange back in 1997 when I first heard about this, I thought this is ridiculous. How could tapping on these acupressure points on the body help people with real significant emotional issues? Well, then I've been convinced by the results and, um, and I've seen results now for many, many people, but I've also seen results at home. You know, I use it, my wife uses it, we've used it with all of our kids. And that's not something you can say about a lot of techniques in this field. Um, so I want to give you a bit of a background on that for those who are totally new and a little bit about the evidence base because there is an, ev an evidence base for tapping that's developing. <clears throat> and the new approach that I've developed, called, which I call intention tapping, or another term for that is what I call uh, intention-based energy process, IEP. So this uh, process of intention tapping combines the tapping on the acupressure points um, with some specific intentions which I discovered uh, at a time when I was suffering actually I was I was suffering with a heel spur not real you know not real big s suffering but you know it was suffering for me because I couldn't move and I was also suffering emotionally at the time wasn't feeling like I was was being the kind of person that I wanted to be and uh, in the process, I was tapping on these uh, acupoints and uh, also doing some reading and doing, using some other techniques. And I discovered these specific intentions, which are very, very powerful in changing not just how you uh, feel, but also they lead to big shifts in how you think. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a mental mind and a somatic body uh, process. I've, uh, since the process I've developed since combines this process of tapping and these intentions with um, exposure by imagining uh, the thing. You don't have to even go into the situation necessarily to be able to treat yourself for it. Um, mindfulness, relaxation training, changing how you breathe and so on. And uh, it's quite surprising what it can do. Where this sits is in the um, in the field of energy psychology, well, before there was a field called energy psychology, there was acupressure and acupuncture. And, um, you know, this uh, came from traditional Chinese medicine, although the points on the body that are used in this process were, were not just exclusively discovered by the Chinese. They did discover that, that, you know, if you stimulate these points, you can have a number of beneficial health outcomes. But it was Roger Callahan who was an American psychologist who discovered if you if you tap on these points while you're focusing on an emotional problem, you can get significant relief happening. And he ended up creating a process called thought field therapy. Um, the guy I studied with, Gary Craig, simplified that process um, into an approach he calls uh, emotional freedom techniques. And this is the most popular and most well-known approach to, to um, uh, tapping on acupressure points. You know, a lot of people just call it tapping. Most people call it EFT. Even when they learn a variant, such as what we developed, my friend Dr. David Lake and I developed a variation of of these approaches. We call simple energy techniques. But it started off as EFT that was created by Gary Craig, and Gary really did a magnificent thing by introducing this to the world. He also did a magnificent thing for me and my good mate Dave Lake by um, getting David Lake up on stage and treating him for his lifelong public speaking phobia in a single 38-minute treatment uh, in front of about 75 people from all over the world. And David got up on stage and he had his, his heart rate was going 
about jumping through his chest and his mouth was dry and he had uh, all the anxiety symptoms. And then he started with, Ga with Gary out on stage, tapping on these acupressure points on the body and focusing in on the different aspects of his problem in turn and calming them down. And, uh, you know, we've learned a lot since that time. But at that time, you know, we were talking in, in terms of like, you know, what is this doing? And the theory was that the, there's a disruption in the body's energy flow and the tapping on these points uh, does something to remove the disturbance in flow so that your energy basically flows normally. Now, now we know that there's a number of positive changes occurring in terms of brain chemistry. We know that it changes brain waves. Um, we know that it influences the operation of the amygdala, which is at the, the um, seat of the brainstem and regulates emotions and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We know there's been a lot of research since then. But at that time, this was just like stunning because David went up there and he was just petrified. And within a few minutes, literally a few minutes, he went from, you know, sitting there and not being able to speak to being able to stand up and then to start taking questions from the audience and start joking with people. And, uh, you know, his, his problem had significantly changed. But the proof is later, right? And uh, what happened later was I invited him to join me. I was already running workshops for counsellors and therapists in various states of Australia. And I said, why don't you come along and we'll teach people. You know, Gary had basically said, you know, I'll teach this to you and you can pass it on to people. So uh, he was very generous uh, with his technique. So David wasn't sure how he would go in front of a live audience. So on, on the plane, he lives in Sydney. I live in Perth, opposite sides of the country. Uh, we both were flying to Melbourne to do this workshop. And um, he did a bit of tapping on these points because he had a bit of a remaining fear of the unknown. He wasn't sure how he would go. So he said on the plane, he was tapping on these points for about 30 minutes just to calm down that, that remaining fear. And uh, he said when the plane landed, the lady sitting next to him put her hand on his arm and said, it's okay, we're there now. She thought he had some kind of uh, flying phobia or something. He was doing some weird ritual to keep himself from, from being anxious about the flight. But in fact, he was thinking about doing this presentation. Then he got up in front of 40 people in, uh, uh, in South Melbourne at a university and he introduced himself and he turned to me, he said, I can't believe it. I don't feel any of it. Now, that is the big difference between these techniques and just exposure. You know, exposure is like feel the fear and do it anyway. Push yourself even though you're feeling anxious. And if you keep doing it, yeah, the anxiety tends to go down. But you know what? You can do it 100 times and you can still have some anxiety. He didn't have any anxiety. That was a real result. And the other thing that happened for him was that, you know, he did a lot of tapping on these uh points on the body over the next little while and he said that feeling of you know that just little feeling of like things are not quite right or I'm a little bit on edge or I have to worry about something he said he had that his whole life and he thought it was hardwired into the human nervous system you know he's a medical doctor and he thought well this must be just something that everybody has um, that's just part of it's evolutionarily developed that we need to be a little bit alert well no it went away and it wasn't necessary and it isn't necessary. And what I find is that most of the people that I work with, they've got, a, they've got like three or four out of 10 of stress in their system all the time. Now, if you're already stressed at a three or four level and then something happens that's challenging and you go up five more, now you're at an eight and that's really stressful. But you know what? You can get that down and that can be at a zero. And that's, that's just astounding to people that that can be possible. But I've found that it can be possible with these techniques. So let me just quickly say a little bit about the research. You can go to the website for ASEP, the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology. Uh, their website is energypsych.org. It's on the slide there, energypsych.org. And uh, they have uh, like a quick facts document which summarizes the state of play of current research. And they also have the research uh, organized according to the type of problems it's been used with, uh, the, the type of studies which are you know, more uh, significant and so on. 
And what's most significant is what's called randomised control trials, where you randomly allocate people to different groups and, uh, and you compare the results before and after. And you also do follow-ups and you also you know, compare with other approaches. Well, now there's been over 65 randomised control trials on tapping, on uh, you know, several variations of tapping, but the main one is on EFT. That's the most commonly researched. On top of that, there's been over 50 pre-post outcome studies, which are not randomised, um, and then five meta-analyses, which are like studies combining studies together. In fact, in terms of research on psychotherapy uh, approaches, it's in the top 10% now in terms of public research. And if you're just finding out about it today, that might just be astounding to you. Well, you know, when we started out, I actually did uh, the first randomised control trial on EFT. We, we got a bunch of people with phobias of small animals like spiders and mice and cockroaches and so on. And we randomly allocated them to the, to the, um, the EFT treatment of tapping on these points while thinking about the mouse and, or spider or whatever it was versus doing a deep breathing uh, alternative treatment. And the results after just a single 30 minute treatment were highly significant and positive. And we have people who like, you know, we had one lady, if she had a, a mouse in her house, she would sleep in her car and she wasn't able to even go in the room before the treatment. And she, like most people, was able to not just go into the room, she was able to go right up to the mouse. And in fact, we, we, uh, we had her on video with her, her um, granddaughter's pet rat climbing all over her and no fear whatsoever and actually thinking it's really quite cute, you know. Um, Okay, so there's been a lot of studies, and if you want to look up the research, you can follow it, up, uh, particularly on the ASEP website. And I highly recommend, if you if you are so inclined, that you look at David Feinstein's 2018 review of the research. He did a prior review in 2012, and then he updated with the more recent research in 2018. David is uh, is excellent at analysing data and synthesising data and summarising data, and also critically reviewing the data. Okay, and um, in his review, he reviewed a uh, hundred peer-reviewed outcome studies. So these are these are studies that have been peer-reviewed, and uh, of those studies, 50, 51 of them were like the gold standard of research, randomised control trials. And uh, he found um, further to his previous review that these approaches are rapid and effective in helping people with all kinds of. Um, emotional problems like anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and other conditions. Uh, more recently, for those who are interested, there's been some fMRI studies by um, Peter Stapleton, who's an Australian researcher, who's actually uh, probably the leading researcher on tapping in the world. Actually, he's done, uh, along with Dawson Church, they've, they've done most of the studies. Um, but there's also, you know, a massive number of studies that have been independently replicated in 12 different countries. So it's not just uh, happening in Australia, it's not just happening in the US. People have been independently replicating these studies, which is what you need to prove that a, an approach is evidence-based. Yeah, you can get the result, but what about if someone else tries to replicate that? Well, turns out they can do that. And our study that we had in, um, you know, with the, the phobia treatment has been replicated at least twice since that time with similar results. Uh, in Stapleton's research, you can go online and you can actually see the changes in brain activity um, that are documented uh, in people with food cravings before and after treatment using EFT treatment of tapping on acupressure points and focusing on the food that they crave. And the craving goes down and the neural activity goes away and settles down in those areas as well. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you today a bit more about the tapping approach that we've developed and also the approach that, that I've developed more recently, which combines that tapping with these intentions that I call IEP, intention-based energy process, and uh, intention tapping, uh, which is kind of a, a, a shortcut term for that. By the way, the beautiful little girl tapping on there is uh, from when we went to the Philippines after the super typhoon and helped people with their with their severe trauma. Um, it was the biggest typhoon to ever hit land at that time, over 300 kilometer an hour winds. And uh, the villages that we went into had been devastated by this approach. And we taught these um, uh, 
uh, talk, tapping to the, the villagers and to um, officials and people who are going to pass it on. And we taught it to the kids and they just took to it like ducks to water. You know, they're not like adults. They don't go, they don't have all these reasons why you can't do something. They just started using it and they felt really good doing it. And the smiles on their faces was just something to see. It was also fantastic to see people who came in with, uh, you know, really severe traumatic stress reactions, just be able to get back their life and their life. And uh, it was beautiful to be able to do that and to have that opportunity. So we use uh, a, a very simple approach, so simple that you can teach it to kids. And we call it simple energy techniques. And that's the tapping approach that we use in intention tapping. And that's something that I developed with my good friend, Dr. David Lake, who you just saw, who, you know, we spent a good 20 years together, by the way, after that time, traveling around the world, teaching people EFT initially. And then we simplified that process and we created what we called simple energy techniques. And, uh, you know, we also developed some other advanced approaches and we spent some time teaching people that all around the world until David retired. So now, I continue that process and uh, he's not there. So I just get credit for all the things that he developed. Um, let me just say something quickly. If you are going to use this tapping, and I hope you do, because we're in a COVID time, if you're going to be using tapping and you're going to be tapping on your face, and if you've been out particularly, you should make sure that you wash your hands before you do that or, or um, you know, get some hand sanitizer. Um, you need to also realise tapping is not a replacement for medical care. And if you're not feeling well, follow your local guidelines in regard to that. So the tapping that we use uh, uses these main points. Now, there are some points on the upper body and there are some points on the, um, on the, uh, on the hand. And basically, it's a process of using uh, two fingers of your dominant hand to tap gently on these points. So the first point is at the start of the eyebrow, then at the side of the eye, edge of the temple, and then under the eye, under the nose, under the lip on the chin, underneath the head of the collarbone, under the arm, side of the thumb, level with the base of the thumbnail, side of the index finger, side of the middle finger, side of the ring finger, side of the little finger, and then on the side of the hand. And you'll see there's also a point on the top of the head which is a combination point. This is commonly used in EFT. And there's also a, a point on the wrist. We just like to get people to just tap there where the, the watch pan would be. And you can tap on the inside and the outside of the wrists. So these are the main points. And it's a really basic process that, that, uh, that mainly says if you, if you stimulate these points, most people are going to feel more relaxed after they do that. So you can just tap on these points and feel more relaxed. You can also use it in a focused way where you focus on issues and you resolve all the different aspects of those issues to the point where those things don't stir you up anymore. This is what happened to David Lake, my friend. He got up on stage with Gary Craig. First, they focused on his, his heart and they were tapping on these points and just focusing on the, you know, the heart rate jumping through the chest. And then that calmed down. And then they focused on his dry mouth feeling and then that calmed down. And then they started to focus on the things that he connected to presenting in public. And it actually ultimately connected back to when he was uh, a boy and when he would, you know, get in trouble, you know, and when he was uh, getting in trouble by his father and stuff like that. And so while he's focusing on those memories, he was tapping on these points and essentially neutralizing their effect on, uh, on his mind and body so that those uh, thoughts and those feelings didn't intrude on him anymore when he was out in, uh, in you know, speaking in public. So the basic process is you can tap on, uh, in any order on these points, on either side of the body. Um, so you can tap on the start of the eyebrow on the left-hand side, or you can tap at the start of the eyebrow on the right-hand side. Some people, if you go online, you'll see they tap on both sides at the same time. And then generally, you can tap in any order on the points. But when you first learn this, it's worthwhile just, just going through and doing this a few times. You know, when I first learned these points from EFT, uh, I just went through and just tapped on them, 
maybe a couple of dozen times until I could remember the locations of all the points. Now, precision is not really essential here. You can just tap close by to the point and that will work. And you just tap gently, hard enough to feel it, but not hard enough to hurt. And when you're learning it, it helps to start at the top and then move down to the bottom on the body points, and then to start off the thumb point and then move down the finger points down to the bottom of the hand, okay? Mostly when people are using EFT, they're just using the upper body points now, including the point on the top of the head, and they're also using the point on the side of the hand. But they have a whole lot of additional things that they do in EFT that we don't do in SET. In SET, um, we just allow you to focus on whatever you're aware of. So how do you know that you're stressed? Is it a thought? Is it a feeling? Is it a sensation in your body or a disturbance in your body? You just focus on whatever you're aware of and then you tap on these points. And when you're doing direct tapping, you just use a mindful approach where you just notice. Say, for example, if I, if I put my attention on my body now, okay, there's a little bit of tension on the bottom of my chest. So I can just tap on these points and all I'm doing is putting my attention on that feeling at the bottom of my chest while I tap on the points. And then I'm just going to notice what, whatever's happening. I'm going to accept that feeling. I'm going to allow it to, to be there. I'm going to allow it to move and do whatever it does because I've learned basically through this process that your feelings are meant to move in your body. Feelings are processed in the body. This is why, you know, in, in all my working with psychology, I was doing so many things that were cognitive and mind-based but they didn't seem to make much difference to what was happening in my body. Now that I've become aware that I have a body and, I, and that, the, that what's going on in that body is significant, and this is where you feel your feelings, and this is where you process your feelings, and your feelings are meant to be there, and they're meant to move, and they're meant to move you, and they're meant to move through you. And you, you just got to allow yourself to be moved by life. And when you do, you're with the flow. You can flow with whatever happens, even very difficult feelings. If you're able to allow them to move through your body, they will move through. And then you can be moved by life and by what happens. And you can incorporate what happens into your understandings. But we resist these bad feelings. We do everything. You know, I was just saying to, I was, I was in getting my coffee this morning and, and uh, we were talking about the fact that there was an exercise class next door. And then in the shop next door to that, there was a vaping, you know, a, a vaping place. And I said, oh, three different ways for people to change the way they feel. Coffee, exercise, and smoking, you know. <laughs> All designed mostly to get us to change the way we feel because everybody's trying to change the way they feel. And a lot of the methods that we use to try and change the way we feel, they have negative side effects if you do them too much or you do them excessively. This process is gentle. It's natural, it, uh, you know, it incorporates mind and body, and it does some things that actually calm the body down so that when you're focusing on something that stresses you and you're tapping on these points, you're sending calming messages to, you, to your brain, and, uh, and now the brain reinterprets what's going on and realises that you're actually safe. So we use a mindful acceptance approach and just tap on the points continually like I'm still doing here because I naturally use this process all the time now. Um, and then we just follow what happens. So I'm noticing, for example, if I focus in on my chest feeling, that that chest feeling has actually moved a little bit further down. And so this is what feelings are meant to do. They're meant to move. So as I keep tapping, I'm just going to notice what happens with that feeling. And right now, if you were watching me, you would have seen my chest start to open up and expand and just naturally uh, breathe a bit better because it's kind of moved out now. The feeling has moved out. And so we just allow it to do whatever it does and we follow what it does and we keep doing this process until we feel better. And if you want to focus on something that's an issue like public speaking or something like that, then you just find all the different things about public speaking that stir you up and maybe all the different ways that it affects you in terms of your feelings, and then you apply this process to them. We've also found that if you just tap on the points without even being clever, and you do that on a daily basis, your general stress levels can come down, and your general feelings of optimism and good energy just naturally come up. 
And we've had people who do this tapping daily who find that a lot of their problems just go away without them having to directly focus on them. And they just feel generally better about their life. So we call that process energy toning. And so if you could just do nothing other than just take away this process and have a go and then do it a few times each day for a few minutes. You know, I like to do it when I go for a walk and, uh, you know, I'm not tapping on the upper body points when I'm walking through the streets. What I am doing is I'm tapping on the hand points. And one of the ways that we teach our clients to do this is by using the thumb to tap on the side of the index finger and letting the thumb just do the tapping on the side of the middle finger and then the side of the ring finger and then the side of the little finger and then go back up again. And you can also wrap around the index finger or the middle finger and tap on the side of the thumb point. And this is something that's portable. I could be doing this just sitting here talking to you and I could just be tapping gently on these points. I've taught CEOs to do this where they have to do presentation to the board and they're just tapping on the points on the hand underneath the table. Now, some of them are quite happy to do it in front of them, <laughs> in front of others and others, you know, they can just do it stealthily and uh, discreetly by tapping on these points. Um, so yeah, that's the process of energy toning, just getting your stress levels to come down by progressively tapping on these points on a regular basis. Okay, so, I mentioned that this intention process was something that I discovered. I discovered it when I was having a really bad time. I was, I was, uh, I couldn't move because I had this heel spur and it was just stopping me from being able to move without pain. And uh, at the same time, I was thinking, you know, I'm not really doing what I want to do in my business and I'm really procrastinating on some big moves that I want to make. And I'm, you know, and you know what happens when you get down on yourself and I'm not a good enough dad and I'm not a good enough husband and I'm not a good enough person. And all of this stuff was really took hold of me. And so I started doing this tapping process. And I also was using some other techniques that I'm aware of. You know, there's a, a shaking technique called TRE, Trauma Release Exercises by Dr. David Vaselli. It's a fantastic process that initiates, you know, a, a natural shaking process in the body that reduce, that just releases stress that's held in the muscles and, and the cells. Um, I was using an approach called logosynthesis by my uh, good friend and colleague, Dr. Willem Lammers from Switzerland. And I was also getting into, um, or got back into, a book called Loving What Is by Byron Katie. And in her book, I, this statement just jumped from the page. She said, a thought is harmless unless we believe it. It's not our thoughts, but the attachment to our thoughts that causes suffering. And my realisation was, yeah, it's the emotional attachments. So when you do this tapping process, you can have something like, you know, when David thought about presenting before he was treated, if he thought about presenting, he just got just completely constricted and he got attached to emotion. But after doing the tapping, the emotion was no longer attached to the thought or even the act of speaking so that he could now think about speaking in public and not have any of those feelings at all. The emotion attached to the thoughts had released. And then you can still have the same thought, but it doesn't affect you anymore. And this is the real power. The power is not just, you know, being a positive thinker and not thinking any negative thoughts. Come on. Human beings think more negative thoughts than positive. It's, it's uh, across the planet. It's universal that, that people think more negatively than positive. And uh, the scientists believe that we've evolved to do that and that it was actually life-saving for us. And... Um, so your brain will naturally do that. And of course, you know, some people say, well, no, we've got to override that. We've got to think positively. Actually, no, it's really helpful to be able to consider what might happen, but you don't want to live there as if it's happening to you and suffer it as if it's happening to you. And the only way you can do that is if you attach to the thought. So you can think about something bad happening. And if you get some bad feelings about that, then on some level, you've attached to that as if it's really happening and your mind and brain can't really tell a difference between something you imagine and something that you uh, that's real when when you're thinking like that but what you do with this approach with tapping is you can focus on that thing that is causing that feeling and then the emotion shifts quite often people will yawn or sigh and uh, shift around and had a couple of people the other day that every time they 
they shifted, they, they kind of did a little burp because it released the disturbance in their stomach area. And then they're like, hey, I can think about it now and it doesn't upset me. I can think about what used to upset me a moment ago and now it doesn't upset me. This is what we found in our phobia study. People could think about the mouse now and it doesn't, didn't stir them up or the spider. Whereas, you know, we had people who, when they saw a picture of a spider, they, they had to throw it onto the ground or run away from it. Just a, just a, just a picture. And now they could go right up to the spider and think whatever they liked about it and the thoughts no longer disempowered them because the emotional attachment had been shifted. And in this moment of, of reading that statement, I had this, this uh, realisation, okay, it's the emotional attachments and tapping releases the emotional attachments, but what if we could do that just with intention? Now, we've been talking about using intention for healing or for shifting emotions for years and people have tried you know various things hypnosis and all kinds of things to to do that and with varying degrees of success but in this moment i i thought about this problem that i have and i was really stirred up and i just formed a simple intention i release all my emotional attachments to this problem now, I wasn't using the tapping at this moment. I was just using the intention. I release all my emotional attachments to this problem. And instantly I had this, ah, just a big spontaneous relaxation. And, uh, and then I thought about that again. And it was just like when tapping works very successfully. It was like, that doesn't stir me up anymore. And so then I focused on another part of the problem. And I did the same thing. I, I, I formed the simple intention. I release all my emotional attachments to this, this part of the problem. I can't even remember what was next. Same thing. Ah, big sigh and, uh, and real relief. And, I, and you know, I just kept working. I just kept doing it. It kept working. And I, and I thought, I'm talking myself into this. This can't be real. But I just kept doing it. And then I was slicing through aspects of this problem just like a hot knife through butter and it was like wow that's clear now wow that's clear now now i can think about that and that doesn't bother me now now i can you know think about my business and i feel like hey i'm ready to go and all this stuff and then i started to realize that hey there's this kind of feeling in my chest isn't that interesting because before i had that little chest feeling maybe that's kind of a an area for me and um and then i thought yeah okay so according to the theory of uh, you know, energy psychology techniques, a lot of them, there's a disturbance in the body. When you have a problem, there's a, there's a corresponding disturbance in, in the body. And of course, the theory in energy psychology is that that's a disturbance in energy flow. Now, of course, there are, you know, there are physiological markers and there are some people who don't believe in the concepts of energy. But I, I personally, I, I, you know, I think, yeah, I can feel differences in terms of my energy, in terms of the feelings in my body. And so I noticed that there was a constriction in my chest. And again, I, I thought, well, yeah, tapping, when you use tapping, it, res, it, you know, it does something to clear up that disturbance. It restores the flow. And so I thought, what if you could just use intention? So I formed another simple intention. I restore the right energy flow to my chest. And instantly I had this big, expansive, spontaneous, deep breath. And I thought, wow, okay. And I was feeling really clear on all the things. And so you know, I went out to my wife and said, hey, I've just been playing around with this new technique. You know, would, have you got any problems that you want, <laughs> that you want fixed? And um, Anyway, it wasn't quite like that, but I said, would you like to give it a try? And she's now used to this because originally when I taught her tapping, she, she was the first person I used it with and she got over her needle fear. And, um, and then I, um, you know, but she thought, well, that's, that's such a ridiculous, silly looking process. I'm not going to do it again. It took a few more years before she started to use it routinely. But, <clears throat> but now she's had the benefit. So she's kind of willing to, to try things that I ask her to try. And she felt it instantly. And then the next day I shared it with a friend and he felt it instantly. And uh, then I thought, wow, okay, so that's three out of three 
this is very interesting. And so I started experimenting with it. I was using it on my own issues. I started combining it with tapping. I came up with the, um, with the term intention-based energy process, um, which I now, when I combine that, that process of using intention with tapping, I call it intention tapping. And uh, I, I then uh, ultimately, a little while later, I came up with another intention that I use quite routinely in this. I restore the right energy balance to this area of the body that's disturbed. And to this day, I still use these three core intention statements a lot. Uh, you know, we've developed now, we, you know, we're training practitioners in this approach. We have therapists and counselors and coaches all over the world that are uh, learning this with, you know, this afternoon, I'll be working with a couple of groups from France that have been learning to, to use this because now a few years down the track, after having, you know, used it on myself extensively, having shared it with my colleagues, having tried it out with clients, having found the results for people is so um, almost invariable, but not invariable because it doesn't always work for everybody. And there are ways to make it work better. But most people, even knowing nothing more than what I've shared with you today, even just knowing these basic statements and this basic process of tapping on these acupressure points and applying that to any problem, you might be surprised what can happen from doing that. So the first statement is, I release all my emotional attachments to whatever the problem is. This problem, this event, this image, this belief, this thought, this person, this memory, whatever it is that's upsetting you, you can simply tap on these points and focus on that problem and then use the intention, I release all my emotional attachments to this problem and then just keep tapping and notice what comes next. And then you follow whatever comes next. And if you're aware of a feeling in the body that's disturbed, you can tap on the points and say, I restore the right energy flow to this area in my body that's disturbed, um, or I restore the right energy balance to this area that's disturbed, and then just keep tapping and notice what comes next. Now, I would like to show you this, and my good friend Rocky, who's your host of this conference, has agreed to do this with me. He knows a bit about, uh, about the tapping. So um, welcome back, Rocky. And uh, let's go to cameras and let's, um, thanks for being a guinea pig. We only have a few minutes, of course, but uh, hopefully it's enough just to show people the, the basic process. Um, so I'm not able to look exactly directly at you because of the way the, the slide system is set up today, but we'll do our best. Sure. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Steve. So you know the tapping. Yep. So just um, start tapping here and, you know, like, you know it already, but just for, for helping people to be aware of it, you know, you can just tap on the points. And what I do with people is that once they know the tapping, like Rocky does, they don't have to tap on the same points as I do. They can just tap on the points in any order, you know, however they like. Um, they can tap on these upper body points or they can tap on the, the hand points. Oh, I'm trying to move this to, <laughs> to the camera to yeah. show you. <laughs> um, and as long as you keep tapping the whole time, we use a continual tapping process. And uh, you can see, even as Rocky starts tapping, there's a little bit of relaxation already starting to come into the system. Yeah. A lot of stress running one of these conferences, mate. So, uh... <laughs> well, well um, I've been tapping as you've been talking, Steve. And, uh, you know, as you know, I've been doing it for 16, 17 years when I first met you and David. So, um, like, yeah. like I keep telling everybody, I know this might sound a, and look a little bit strange if you're not um, familiar with it, but completely life changing for me, the clients I've worked with, the people I've taught it to. So, Steve, happy to uh, do a little demonstration. Okay, well, we only have five minutes. So, let's just see if we can get started with something mm -hmm. and, uh, and show people the basic process. So, what's the problem that you'd like to? <laughs> Give it a go on. There's a big list. No, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> not really. Um, but the one, you know, the one, there is one that's been lingering and that's similar to Louise, the um, the whole thing about needles, you know. I've got to really, I mean, you know, soon, I guess, the COVID thing, but I've got to go and get a blood checkup, you know, like I've been avoiding yeah. it because I just don't like getting needles, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And an interesting thing because Louise and I went and had our vaccinations recently 
just no, none of it, none of it remaining, no concerns at all. Right. And so probably even though you know uh, the process of tapping, you, have, you haven't probably completely worked on all the different aspects of that for you yes. with this. And so, um, yeah. That's why it's actually good sometimes, by the way, folks, to actually have someone to bounce off because you may not capture all your own aspects. Yeah, we can't do everything on our own. So mm. this is great for self-help, but you won't be able to do everything using this. So what we do with this approach is we start globally with whatever you're aware of. And so just let me know what you're thinking of or feeling or imagining or well i know this might sound random steve but we, you know i thought we might do a demonstration about needles but i am aware of this little knot in my back actually you know? okay so all right well believe it or not something which doesn't necessarily seem to be related can be so just focus on that knot and just say i restore i restore the right energy flow the right energy flow to my back to my back and now the key is that you don't try and make anything happen in that area. You just keep tapping on the points and you just notice what happens. And it might shift to, you know, the feeling might change. It might stay the same. It might You might have a thought. You might have an image. You might have a memory. Just be open to whatever comes next. Mm -hmm. I've noticed and it's subsided somewhat, even slightly, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's still there, but it's subsided. Mm -hmm. Okay, and because you brought up the needle thing, let's let's go with that mm -hmm. and just see whether that has an influence on this. Sure. So just say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To needles. To needles. Hmm. And now let that do whatever it does. And you just went, hmm, what, what, did you notice something? Did something yeah, come up? Just a, an image of needles. <laughs> okay. So now just take whatever comes next mm -hmm. and make that the next target. So just, just focus on that image. Yeah. And just say, I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To this needle image. To this needle image. You don't even have to describe it in words. If you have an image, you can just say this image. Yeah. You know? And now just just let it do whatever it does and notice where it goes, what it does. Mm, it's even when I try to think about it, it's not there. Or it's hard for me to focus on. Okay, so that image is. Uh, do you have the same image, but it's further away or fuzzy or, or whatever, or is it just hard to get the image at all? Um, yeah, I mean, if I f try to focus on it, it's there, but it's it doesn't seem to be an issue or bother me like like it did initially. Okay, so that image is, is possibly just one aspect of the whole problem, as you know. Yeah. So in order to get over your whole problem, there might be a whole lot of aspects like that. Mm-hmm. What, how are you feeling right now about the whole thing? It's so when I go in, you know, in the past, I've had this, you know, it's a little embarrassing, I guess. Um, but sometimes I've fainted, you know, after it. And so right. I'll have to go in and say to them, look, I'm gonna, it's best that I know exactly what you're talking about. I had the same issue 100 years ago, right? Okay, so. All those past things are actually encroaching on the present, okay? Yeah. So we're just going to bundle them all up together for now. Yep. And we can do this with this technique. They don't do it in EFT, but we like to do it with this technique. Mm -hmm. So just say, I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To all of my past upsets and embarrassments. <sighs> to all of my past upsets and embarrassments around needles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not well, hey, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll clear out the whole closet. Sure, you know? sure. <laughs> <laughs> and now just let that do what it does, yeah. Because even, even though we might, you know, still have a conversation, it's still going to be going ahead in the background. Because what I believe is happening here is that the intention is a direction to your unconscious mind, yeah, which is the bigger part of you, and it will carry on the process 
even while we just wait and you know notice what comes next yeah so just notice what comes next whether it's a feeling a thought a memory sensation oh I, i've got this memory that's just popped up oh my god okay. so this we started there were a whole lot of memories what comes now is one significant memory yeah okay yeah all right so this was the last time I went for a blood test, which is a couple of years ago, and I really should go annually at my age. And so I went and <laughs> she's going, oh, I can't find your vein. And she's doing all sorts of things. And then she was trying to go in through my, um, part, you know, wrist. And uh, it's just, it was okay. a yeah. We're gonna. That's actually a, 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 a little t trauma because it's a traumatic experience for someone who has that fear to go into that situation. Yeah. So I hope, by the way, if anybody who's watching has this issue or something like it, that they're tapping on these points right now along with us because otherwise the anxiety will be uh, coming up. So just say I release all my emotional attachments. I release all my emotional attachments. To that past trauma. To that past trauma. And I'm just going to bring in another intention that I that I use as part of this process. There's a number of others that I use. Um, just want to use this with you now. Just say I put that experience. I put that experience back into the past. Back to back into the past, where it actually happened. Where it actually happened. And now just keep tapping and notice what happens. Yeah, so that sigh you just saw Rocky do, that's very common with this technique. And that sigh is usually when one aspect moves, sometimes another aspect takes its place. Sometimes it's just a relaxation, but we'll just see what, what's what's happening for you. Um, so right now I'm actually quite neutral, you know. Um, I feel a lot more relaxed, especially around the eyes. Um, and when I try to think about needles or even that experience, like I really have to work hard to try to even think about it and focus on it, you know? Yeah. Well, see, because things that are in the past, they should be in the past. But yeah. sometimes you, because they are traumatic, um, uh, they kind of, we attach to them. Yeah. And, uh, and therefore, and, and what our mind does as well is that it goes, ah, oh, you suffered here. I'm going to stop you from suffering again by whenever you think about this, I'm going to give you an injection of some of that past feeling just to remind you yeah. so that you, you avoid it, right? Right. <laughs> it's, it's been working well. <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't have your blood test for 20 years, you know, and, and stuff like that. This is what people do because right. the standard way of dealing with anxiety is to avoid it. Yes. And this gives you a way to actually to, to overcome it, to, to be able to go, okay, this thing that's in the past can be in the past. And now you can look back on it mm. as a memory rather than suffering it as if it's happening now or rather than projecting that the same thing or worse is going to happen in future. Right. You know? Right. So, mate, we are going to run out of time, I'm yeah. noticing. And, uh, no, no, right. and, and I just wanted to, to show people the very basics of that. And, uh, yeah, I, thank you so much for uh, stepping up and being the guinea pig Not for a few well, moments. Well, thank, thank you, brother. Yeah. No worries, man. So, um, look, uh, I know that we're supposed to be going for about 50 minutes and we're about 49 now. Um, probably going to take me a couple of minutes just to wrap up here. Uh, this process is almost too simple. And uh, it really is just a matter of combining the simple process of tapping on active pressure points with these intention statements and then accepting and allowing your feelings to move and do whatever they do and then accepting and following whatever comes next and applying the process to whatever comes next. And this, this is the process I call intention tapping or intention-based energy process. Now, um, essentially, you want to use this on any problem that you're experiencing now, anything from the past that's still affecting you, um, and anything that your mind is projecting in the future in terms of uh, you know, fantasies of gloom and doom and bad things happening and so on. And when you do that, you can release your emotional attachments to the past and the future and you can be present in your life right now, which is the only place that anything happens. 
I mentioned that your brain and your nervous system can't tell the difference between things that you vividly imagine and something you actually experience. Well, actually, um, you can, uh, using this process, you can detach from the, the that, you know, you can, you can release that emotional attachment to the experience so that, in fact, your nervous system is no longer affected by that thought. It's just um, imagining it uh, as a thing, but it's not something that's affecting you right now. You can see that it's a possibility, but you're not having to be affected as if it's definitely going to happen. Now, I'd love for you to uh, follow up and find out more. Uh, we have a new website for this process called intentiontapping.com. You can go there and you can watch. Um, there's a free, a couple of free videos on the homepage. One where I was discussing with Dawson Church. He's uh, one of the top EFT researchers. And he and I actually did this. In fact, uh, we did this uh, recording for a uh, French anxiety summit. And uh, this is in English. And they translated it into French. And I was uh, doing a, another summit with the French people the other day. And they related to me that, that there was a guy who watched that recording used the process on his smoking and had given up smoking had now been given up smoking for a year so maybe you could do the same just go on there watch the video um, try the process out you never know obviously for most people with smoking you might need to do some more work and you might need to find a practitioner we have practitioners now that are certifying in this approach and you can find out about them on there we also have another website called eftdownunder.com and the most recent stuff is on the blog at eftdownunder.com and then there's also training uh, on both those websites, intentiontapping.com and eftdownunder.com. And then on the YouTube, my YouTube is Wells Down Under. So if you go to YouTube and you look for me, Wells Down Under, um, there's the link on there if you want to quickly take a uh, screenshot or something like that uh, or follow up. I think everybody's going to get the slides um, from these presentations anyway, and you're certainly going to be able to to watch this again for a little while. Is that right, Rocky? That's correct, um, Steve. So um, folks will get the replay access for 48 hours. Or some of you who, um, also those of you who are members will have, you can log in, be part of your membership um, for the Accidental Counselor for the next 12 months. Um, and you might also have the 30 day access if you chose that um, option. Um, Joan, you, you're saying, does it work for big emotional stuff, say associated with abuse, et cetera? Absolutely. Yes, it does. Absolutely. But I wouldn't work on those kind of uh, issues unless I was working with someone who was skilled at working with uh, big T trauma, is what that is. And, uh, and really, you're not going to be able to do all of that work yourself. Um, uh, a lot of people have got a lot of relief using it for self-help for all of the um, uh, post-trauma symptoms and so on. But really, um, do yourself a favour and work with someone who has qualifications and experience in working with trauma. And uh, you know, a number of people who've uh, recently qualified as our practitioners have that, as well as training in the intention tapping. Do they? Yeah. They can see that on your website, Steve. All the um, practitioners that you've trained. Yeah, yeah. So we've only. Uh, like we're just getting them up there now so we we currently have 10 it's it's you know it's, as i say it's very new but we've we've just run the second uh level two training we have a level two training well two groups in in france that are going through this right now and so there'll be progressively more um practitioners through this year right you know i just uh, uh approved three people in the last fortnight uh to go on there and we'll be adding them as we go but uh all of these people can work all over the world, world via Zoom as well as um, face to face if they're uh, in your local area. Um, and you can find them on intentiontapping.com and the practitioner listing on there. And if anyone wants to, to train in this and wants to learn more, we have a couple of uh, level one basic introductory workshops coming up in June, different times for different time zones. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's another level two for later in the year for those who want to learn to use it as a practitioner. Level one is for anyone, anyone who wants to use it for themselves and anyone who wants to use it to help others. Yeah. Great, Steve. Thank you so much. Um, so again, everyone, those of you who know me, know if you've ever done any work with me, know that I'll usually um, quote Steve and David. These are the two folks, like I said before, yes, Steve, besides my wife and daughter, um, <laughs> who, who, who have played massive parts in, in my life, you know, um, and a lot of the this information that I, I've learned from you, Steve, um, and uh, thank you, mate. Thank you so much again for coming along and um, sharing this with um, our audience. Much appreciated. And everyone, be sure to check out Steve's resources. 
um, because they're life changing. Thanks again. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Mark, and thanks uh, for uh, yeah, everything you're doing with putting this stuff out for free. Great stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everyone, and uh, we'll see you in our other sessions. Be sure to check the replay also. Thanks again. Bye for now. Ciao.